Just like humans, plants can have diseases too. These include things like iron deficiencies and more. And today, we're also going to look at how these diseases can be detected in the first place. Make the most of this video and your revision time with my study along workbook. It's got loads of tasks to complete while you watch and exam questions to test what you've learnt. The link is in the description below or head over to emmatheteachy.com. Earlier in the infection and response topic, you learned about plant diseases including TMV and rose black spot. Viral, bacterial and fungal pathogens can infect plants, but there are other ways that plants can be damaged. The first is by insects, in particular aphids. Aphids are small green insects that have a sharp mouthpiece. They insert this into the plant stem and penetrate the phloem vessel, sucking the sap out of it. This deprives the plant of the sugar it made during photosynthesis, which damages the plant and reduces its growth. Aphids can also be vectors for disease. This means they carry the pathogens to the plant. Gardeners can destroy aphids by using chemical pesticides or biological pesticides. This is when predators like ladybirds are released into the area the plants are grown in. Here, they eat the aphids, removing the pest. Ion deficiency can also damage plants. This is when the soil doesn't have enough of certain ions. And there are two you need to know. Nitrate ions are needed for protein synthesis and therefore growth. So nitrate ion deficiency causes stunted growth, i.e. the plant is smaller. Magnesium ions are used to make chlorophyll. When there isn't enough magnesium, less chlorophyll is made and the leaves look pale or yellow coloured. There is reduced growth as a result. This condition is called chlorosis. Knowing about the ions needed for plants to grow at their best allows gardeners and horticulturists to provide the optimum conditions for plants by enriching the soil with all of the ions that they need. This next part is for higher tier only, so if you're studying foundation, just skip ahead to the questions. Okay, you need to know how plant diseases can be detected. Pause the video and see how many you can spot in the picture below. All right, there are seven indicators of disease. Let's see how many you spotted. Here we've got discoloration, presence of pests, spots on leaves like rose black spot, areas of decay or rot, malformed leaves or stems, and here we've got abnormal growth, and finally stunted growth. So there are seven to memorize. Once you've spotted an indicator of a disease, the next step is to identify which disease is causing it. This can be tricky as many plant diseases have overlapping symptoms. There are three main ways to identify a disease. The first is using a gardening manual or website. You can compare the disease plant with descriptions and pictures of each disease. Secondly, is taking infected plants or samples to a laboratory to identify the pathogens using something like microscopy or DNA analysis. This may be done for crop plants or forests when the disease affects many plants. And finally, we can use testing kits that contain monoclonal antibodies. These will bind to antigens on certain pathogens if they are present. You learned about this in the previous video. Once the disease has been identified, appropriate action to treat or contain it can happen. Let's test what you've learnt. Pause the video and try the quick questions in your head or in the study along workbook and then press play when you're ready to go through the answer. 1. State two reasons why aphids are described as garden pests. Well firstly, they feed on the sap from the phloem of plants which reduces their growth and secondly, they are vectors of disease which means they can carry pathogens. Two. Explain why magnesium ion deficiency can affect the growth of a plant, and this links to topic 1 cells and topic 4 bioenergetics. So we'll start with explaining what magnesium deficiency does. If a plant is deficient in magnesium ions, 
Less chlorophyll is made. This means that less light is absorbed for photosynthesis, so less food or glucose is made for the plant, which results in reduced growth. It's important to say that the growth is reduced, as we weren't told this in the question, so we should say how the growth has been impacted. You could go one step further if you've already learned the bioenergetics topic and say that glucose is used to produce amino acids for protein synthesis, and less proteins would result in less growth. As this was an explain question, I've used language in my answer that means that I'm forced to explain my answer. You can check yours and see if you've used some language like this too. I've highlighted it here. Okay, number three. A crop farmer spots some signs of disease in her plants, but cannot identify the disease from her gardening manual. What other methods could she use to identify the disease? And this is a higher tier question. So firstly, she could take a sample or a whole plant to a lab to identify the pathogen that's causing the disease. Or she could buy and use a monoclonal antibodies testing kit. Okay, how did you do on the questions? Next up is the last video of the infection and response topic. If you've enjoyed this video or find it helpful, then please consider subscribing to support me and to get more GCSE science help. Thanks for watching. Bye.